Hello everyone, I'm Michael Wheatley, Music Director of Skagit Symphony. I'm here with our Assistant Conductor, Jacob Scherer. For tonight's event, I'll be handing the baton to him. Welcome everyone to part four of Skagit Symphony Streamathon. In this episode, we're gonna learn more about the education outreach that the orchestra does. From the heart of our education curriculum with our school and family concerts, to ways the orchestra engages high school students, our online web resources, and our exciting new Beethoven series. Let's go check it out. Hi, my name is Mandy Walters Whitaker, and I'm here to tell you about a celebration we'll be having this year. December marks Beethoven's 250th birthday, and throughout this season, the Skagit Symphony will be celebrating Ludwig von Beethoven. Our concerts will feature his music, and we're excited to be able to offer you an educational opportunity. We realize a lot of you are home, maybe with your kids, maybe you need something to do together. And we'd like to give you this opportunity to learn a little bit more about Beethoven and why he's still important 250 years on. Over the next nine months, there will be a new adventure with Beethoven each month. If you wanna just learn a little, read the first section, get a small snapshot of who Beethoven was, a little bit about his music. If you wanna learn more, dive into the other parts. Learn about his politics, learn about his music more in depth, learn about the people who worked around him and his struggles with disability, a dysfunctional family, and trouble finding love. Now, even if you've never stepped in a concert hall, I promise you've heard Beethoven's music. His theme of fate knocking at the door became V for victory in World War II. His Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy, was used to celebrate the fall of the Berlin Wall. Maybe you've heard Beethoven's music in Trolls World Tour, or Jurassic World, or on the funny pages where Schroeder plays with his beloved Beethoven on his toy piano. So I hope you'll join us over the next few months, learn a little bit about Beethoven, and find out why he's still so important. I hope you'll join us. Thanks. Hello, my name is Deborah Smeltzer, and I am the chairperson of the Music Education Committee at Skagit Symphony. I'm here today to share with you the resources we provide in our program and especially our virtual classroom. Our homepage shows the poster from the family concert that we did in January of 2020. And this page also shows all the different links we have on the virtual classroom with resources for teachers, students, and the community. And I'm going to take a moment today to walk you through a few of these and share them with you. We provide cultural context for the music that we play through art, through biographies of composers, and listening links of the repertoire. Along with that, we provide historical context through maps and timelines that help students learn about things going on at the time the music was being composed and played. For teachers, in order to prepare their students for a live performance in McIntyre Hall, we provide teacher tips, music learning standards, and concert etiquette. This all comes together under the baton of Jacob Scher, our assistant conductor, who has provided leadership for our school and family concerts these past few years. This year, we'll be focusing much more on online learning, and it's thanks to the generous community we have here in Skagit Valley that we're able to provide this music education. Thank you. In addition to these resources outlined by Mandy and Deborah, we also offer to talented and motivated high school age students the opportunity to audition for membership within our orchestra. If successful, they have the unparalleled experience of rehearsing and preparing concerts in a full orchestra alongside our highly trained and experienced musicians. These many educational resources that the Skagit Symphony has created to inspire our community are not meant solely for the benefit of young students or high school age students, but also for the young at heart. If you have any interest in music history, I myself have taught seven courses which are all available for free at skagitsymphony.com. These courses entitled Great Turning Points in Music History cover in three volumes the whole of music history, in an additional three volumes the whole of opera history, and finally a single course on the history of film music.
The piece you just heard me perform was the introduction to Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershwin, a piece that inspired me to become a clarinet player and ultimately a music teacher here at Mount Vernon High School. My name is Jacob Scher, and I'm the assistant conductor of the Skagit Symphony. You never know when there's going to be one piece or a moment that's going to grab a student and create a lifelong connection with music. I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you some of the engaging and enriching experiences the Skagit Symphony provide for the youth in our valley. Over the past 15 years, the Skagit Symphony has been engaging audiences of all ages with our education concert series. Each year, the symphony performs three live concerts for over 1,800 fifth graders during the school day, free of charge. At these concerts, students get to hear a variety of orchestral pieces from the standard repertoire to even some of their favorite movie soundtracks. That following Sunday, the orchestra puts on a family concert. During a pre-concert event, audiences get to interact up close with the musicians and their instruments. Many even try them out for the first time. Unfortunately, we are not able to hold either of these wonderful concerts this year, but stay on the lookout at SkagitSymphony.com for our virtual events. Especially exciting is the work of our dedicated education committee to bring Beethoven to a virtual classroom this year, celebrating his 250th birthday. Thank you for being here. We hope you enjoy this program, and I know we will continue to find ways of inspiring the youth of Skagit Valley. Hi, my name is Angela. I was a part of the Skagit Symphony from 2017 until 2020, and I auditioned to be in the Skagit Symphony. For a couple of years, I was the only student, and it was super scary and nerve-wracking, but I was, I felt so included, and I felt like I was a part of the group, and it was the most amazing three years and I learned so much about my instrument and about being in an orchestra and learning from a conductor. And it was something that I took all those lessons that I really applied to other orchestra groups and just my cello adventures. I'm very sad that my last year was cut short, but I'm so happy that I was a part of it and that I was given the opportunity and I'm so happy that the symphony is continuing to do that. This year, I started my first year at college. I attend the University of Puget Sound and I'm planning on being a music composition major. And I, again, I'm so happy that all of the experiences that I um, had in high school, especially the Skagit Symphony really helped pave my paved the way to really learning about what I'm passionate about, which is music. And I'm so happy that I was there for the time that I was and that everyone was so welcoming and it's something very special to me. Hi, I'm Zach. I've played with Skagit Symphony for one and a half years now. Um, everyone there is super nice. It's a great experience and I always have a great time. Yeah, Skagit Symphony is a spiritual lifeline for me. Uh, I enjoy playing good music, and not only that, I enjoy the camaraderie of sharing the music with the other players and with the audience. Uh, <laughs> Addison, how long have you been going to see the Skagit Symphony? Since I was in second to third grade. And what's your most favorite thing about going to watch the Skagit Symphony? It's nice because it's like a group event. So you can see, I, well, I can see people that I know in the symphony and also people that attend the symphony. <laughs> so to the Skagit Symphony, uh, bravo, may it go on forever. <laughs>
How could anyone not have fun playing all these instruments? Now, oftentimes we get to hear just the percussion behind the orchestra, but in these next videos, we're gonna bring the percussion front and center. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
My name is Ruth McNally and I'm the treasurer of the Skagit Symphony. As a relatively new board member, I had the opportunity to attend the school's concert for the first time last January. It was an amazing event, in part due to the incredible logistics of completely filling and emptying McIntyre Hall with school children three times in four hours. It was wonderful to see the excitement of the children, particularly as they left. I cannot forget one boy who was energetically conducting as he walked out. This event required a team effort from the staff, orchestra, and many other volunteers, and I am grateful for their efforts. Skagit Symphony is truly a treasure for our community. I'm Christy Hine. I'm a member of the Skagit Symphony Chorus, and that is actually what first brought me to the symphony. Uh, the chorus was formed in 2009, and I have been involved ever since. Uh, we became season ticket holders in 2011. Rupen, who was the former director, did Anacorta Senior College courses that we took on the history of music. So we were sorry to say goodbye to him, but we were thrilled to get Michael Wheatley as our new director. His audition concert, he came out to give his pre-concert talk, and we looked at each other and said, he's the one. And we were so excited when he became the director. Our first two concerts with him were fabulous, especially the holiday concert where we sang. So it's really been hard to have that cut off right in the middle of that first wonderful season. But I really have faith that we're all going to be getting together again and making music. Hi, I'm Karen Baldwin with Quantum Construction, and we support and we love the Skagit Symphony because their music impacts our lives and the lives of so many others, both young and old, in our community. They bring such pleasure, and they're so passionate and dedicated. There's real joy in experiencing one of their performances or attending the beautiful annual garden tour where the harmony of music and nature come together we love Skagit Symphony. Hi, I'm Michael Whiten. I'm Paul Dunn. We love the Skagit Symphony. <laughs> yes, we do. What do you love about the symphony? You know what I love about the symphony is that here we are in one of the most beautiful parts of the country. We're surrounded by all this natural beauty, and yet we also have access to high quality, high culture stuff like the symphony. You can just go right there and check it out. Yeah, the music program that the symphony does for the kids. I love that kind of outreach into everyone in the community, not just those who know classical music and appreciate classical music, but those who are just learning for the first time about classical music and what, what an orchestra is, a symphony, and all of those great things. And our Skagit Symphony does that. It makes it accessible to all of us. And that's so exciting and so important. Um, I really appreciate you said that because you are a lifelong musician, but I'm not. And so sometimes symphonies can kind of seem like a little intimidating welcome only to, to people who have a background in music. But I love the fact that um, Michael Wheatley gives these lectures in yeah. advance yeah. of the performances and that it really is inviting to everybody regardless of their experience. So many things we love about Skagit Symphony. Yeah. We're so grateful for it. We love, love, love Skagit Symphony. Hi, I'm Marna Fletcher, Executive Director of Skagit Symphony. I'm here to introduce our Conductors Roundtable, featuring Music Director Michael Wheatley, Assistant Conductor Jacob Scher, and our very special guest, Rupen Shakarian, who was Skagit Symphony's Music Director for 14 years before stepping down to pursue other musical endeavors. We hope that you'll enjoy this lively conversation. Okay, Rupen, let's dial into you a little bit more here. Um, <laughs> you were with Skagit Symphony for 14 years. Um, so to date, you're the, you have the most um, longevity of a relationship with our organization. Um, we've been around for 40 years, as you know. Um, and uh, I would love to hear about 
some of the highlights um, you experienced with our community orchestra and maybe some of the challenges too. The, the one that immediately comes to mind as far as the highlights are just the orchestra members, really. They are a delightful bunch, as it were, and they uh, actually had, a, we had a tremendously wonderful um, camaraderie and spirit of wanting to get together and really enjoy making music. And they were very willing partners to go along with my sometimes um, um, not so standard style of interpretation, uh, particularly with either tempo or with uh, performance practices that I was very much intrigued with when we were we do classical repertoire. But, um, but on the whole, it was really the camaraderie and the spirit. And there was a sense of joy, a real spirit of joy that really marked it as a very unique experience. And uh, so that is a kind of an overall highlight. There were a lot of wonderful performances and concerts and um, individual members as well as sections or the entire orchestra uh, came through in a variety of ways. And we had the, um, as one orchestra member said, we had the incredible knack of peeking right at the performance and really making sure that everything went well. And even if it didn't, it was really the attitude and the spirit of the performances that really gave a lot of uh, energy to not only me, but to the audience. It was really, so that's, that's one aspect of the highlight. Um, Great. I, I want to add that, you know, as, as Rupert, I'm sure will will second, you know, orchestras carry a personality from you know generation to generation and it, it changes much slower than the directors tend to um you know there's a certain sound and um oh even uh a, a sense of personality musical personality and, and camaraderie that that actually will you know span generations of these ensembles they tend to carry this the prior sounds forward you know chicago still has a sound that's unique to chicago and philadelphia still sounds you know very much the way it sounded under ormandy and stakowski way back when and i want to say that you know this orchestra still carries you know that sense of joy and um oh i don't know we're all so fortunate to to have a, a chance to make music uh, with one another and to be in a community that that treasures it, you know, and, and supports it. You know, that's something that's really unique about this orchestra in particular. But, you know, these things flow from the top and, you know, it, it's a tribute to your leadership, Rupan, that this orchestra still carries that, that sense of joy of music making. Well, you're very kind and thank you. Yeah. But, but the, the, the truth is that it is the, you could see it and hear it in the orchestra. Uh, and that's what's, that's what really is significant. Whether I'm there or Michael's there or Jake's there, there's that personality as Michael was describing. So Michael, tell us a little bit about your most unusual inaugural year with Skagit Symphony. Yeah, the year <laughs> Started last summer, yeah. Yeah, so uh, well, you know, I have my, my audition concert with this group uh, February of 2019, February and March is my audition period with this ensemble. And of course, um, I arrived with a storm, um, which I quite like actually, shut the whole town down. A snowstorm. Yeah, February 9th was, was the giant snowstorm. Apparently it was a once in a decade storm for this area. Mm -hmm. Me having come from Rochester, New York, I didn't understand what all the hubbub was about. But, uh, <laughs> We ended up being um, one rehearsal shy of what we hoped we would have. We ended up having five instead of six rehearsals. Um, but I'll say that the one thing I noticed immediately from the first rehearsal um, was, uh, you know, the, the chemistry between myself and the ensemble. We just kind of clicked. And that really isn't always the case. You know, I've done enough guest conducting and enough auditions, you know, to discover that, um, it, it's a lot like dating, you know, and, and sometimes you click and sometimes you don't. So there's this chemistry and with this, with this lovely body of people, I mean, we were firing on all cylinders um, within five minutes of the first downbeat. We were really already making music with one another and it was, it was so impressive um, and moving an experience that I felt that, uh, you know, I, we, we could make great art together and I wanted to be part of this community. 
and that plus, you know, I, I had the opportunity to, to get to know so many of uh, the patrons and, and the administrative team behind the group and board members. And it, it really is an amazing group here. So that's what made me decide, you know, that I would come across the country and plant some roots here in the Skagit Valley myself. Um, so the first season we'd planned to have was, was meant to be twofold. I, I was trying to describe, to, to paint a musical picture of what I thought this region was, you know, the, the Skagit Valley and the Pacific Northwest in general. Um, so there are references to, to the landscape, to the history of the area, to cultural influences in the area. You know, the first concert was based on music of, of the Highlands um, with the Scottish, um, what is the Scottish festival that happens? The Highland Games. Highland Games. Yeah, so little things like that. And so we had the, the bagpipes as part of Orkney Wedding and Sunrise at the first concert. And then uh, basically my plan was through the season, we would get closer and closer to what I kind of envisioned our programming might become in the future. So I planned a final concert that, that had an immigrant composer on it and a female composer on it and a black composer on it. And I was had all these wonderful grand ideas of what I thought our season was going to end like. And then of course, you know, uh, worldwide health concerns decided to <laughs> take us in completely other directions by March. Um, so yeah, I, I consider that, you know, we haven't had to cancel anything. We're just postponing a lot of these great ideas until, you know, future concerts. Um, I would um, love, Jake, to ask you as a look to the future. Um, you have two beautiful young children. And um, how will you uh, introduce them to orchestral music? And will you encourage them um, to play an instrument? And how do you, how do you see um, kind of music education just in your own home as a family? Um, well, it, in some ways, I think it's kind of a, a, a lineage as far as how I grew up. So my dad was a trumpet player and, um, and I grew up just listening to him play in, in the house and playing with him. And uh, it, it kind of happened through osmosis. It wasn't, I don't think anything that they had planned um, and so I, uh, I have a, a son who's um, three and a half, and then a daughter who is two months, uh, a couple turning a couple of days ago. Um, and there's just kind of music in our house all the time. Um, where uh, he knows where when I go to work, oh, Dad, you go to the band room, and um, he sometimes will conduct when I'm uh, when I was uh, in front of the band. He come to a concert. Um, actually, it is a funny story. Um, so uh, my wife brought our son, um, this was uh, this year for the um, uh, family concert. And uh, he was in the back. And um, uh, I guess I had come out on stage and, and conducted and, and Brandon turned to the person next to him and goes, that's my dad <laughs> and yelled it pretty loud apparently. That's and he was like, Hi dad. And he was waving the. But what advice yeah. <laughs> would you would you give to a um, a young uh, conductor? <laughs> well, you can, that's one of the things that I would recommend for young conductors is to uh, experience singing, playing, uh, string instruments, wind instrument, and actually singing. You don't have to be a great singer, but um, as long as you experience that. But as far as uh, other advice, the, the thing, the, the situation is that when I was maybe your age, Jake, or even younger, or Michael, when you were 19 or 18, the opportunities for this, my generation, were not as plentiful as it is as they are now. It's just extraordinary what through technology, but also the opportunities for going to all over the world, taking master classes and uh, doing m multiple um, festivals and going and, and experiencing. So it's really a different scenario. But despite all of that, um, the thing that I think that's really crucial, as I've heard the previous two, three, four generations before, is that basically conduct any, any, opportunity, any opportunity that you have, whether it's two people or whether it's a, 
uh, a small ensemble or whatever that it is, vocal, instrumental, but it doesn't make any difference. Just be out there and conduct simply because that in itself is your time of practice and education. Otherwise, it's um, studio work, but that will be important, but you have to go outside. And unfortunately, our, our job is actually, our position is uh, basically, we learn when we are actually getting positions to conduct. Uh, how else are we going to do it? Right. Yeah. What, you know, sometimes you hear interviewers asking, what's on your bedside table? Mm. What are you reading? And so this is that kind of question about what, what kind of music have you been listening to lately? Michael, you go first. All right, sure. <laughs> um, well, as is always the case, um, it, it really is a little bit of everything. Um, my, I had a violin teacher uh, when I was at Eastern Music Festival. Uh, last two years of high school, I spent two summers at Eastern Music Festival and I had a violin teacher there. Um, his name escapes me at the moment. Oh, what a brilliant violinist he was. I was so intimidated by him. And then I remember one day he asked me if I would join him for lunch after one of our lessons. And we get in his car and it was Led Zeppelin playing on the radio. And I, and I was just so taken aback. We were talking about Mahler 30 seconds ago, you know, and now he's listening to Led Zeppelin. And he said, oh, there's no classical music allowed in the car. And that was his own role. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I've never forgotten that. I've always gotten a kick, but it was one of those first little things when I was a kid and I was so obsessed with classical music, classical music, that I didn't take anything else seriously. And it opened up my, my world a little bit to think music is music, you know, and it doesn't matter where it's coming from. And then, you know, years later, what's the last paper I write as a doctoral student? It's on three songs by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> so anyway, with the, I, I just pulled up my Spotify app and the three things I've been listening to most recently, uh, Scriabin Piano Works, including the Piano Concerto, which we're going to do at some point. I love Scriabin's Piano Concerto. Um, some bluegrass music. And then Melody Gardot, uh, singer, songwriter who lives in Paris, but originally from New Jersey. Melody Gardot, I'm completely in love with her voice. So lots of jazz standards, and, and she just released a new song like last Friday. And there, this portrait. Oh. <laughs> of course. Um, I've been, exactly. <laughs> I've, been, I, I've always had this passionate love affair, or whatever you want to call it, this adoration, or just a total immersion into Bach. And Bach never ceases to inspire me to, to just to be refreshed in a variety of ways. And so I've been listening to an awful lot of his cantatas and motets. And, uh, and then I play all the well-tempered clavier at the piano. Not very well, but at least I want to play it. So I, I'm enjoying Bach over the years. So it's always been uh, my, my, as I call him, he's, he's my... He's my grandfather. In fact, I have a, uh, I used to say, or I still say, Mozart is my cousin that I have a lot of fun with. And Haydn is my uncle, which I enjoy. And Bach is my grandfather, who I learned from. Uh, and, you know, I pay attention to him. But I've been also listening to a lot of 20th century or 21st century contemporary younger composers throughout. And what's really nice with you two, I want to be able to listen to a lot of the younger composers of two or three generations younger than my age, uh, just to sort of see where, what, what they're doing, but also how the trends and shapes are, are occurring. One of the persons that, one of the composers that I really have been enjoying in a variety of, in a way that I'm not completely, completely sold, but I'm really enjoying his technique and, um, and um, his sense of orchestration is Michael Torkey. Oh. And the other one is Carter Pan whose technique as a, comp a composer is just unbelievable. So I've been enjoying those two amongst a lot of other composers. So uh, early, the younger composers, and also I've been jumping way back into Renaissance and um, medieval music, particularly with Renaissance composers from all over the place, uh, not just England, but from Italy and France. And um, that's always been a passion of mine is to listen to that. So, you know, it's kind of- I have to agree with you, Ken. I'm I'm listening, I think right now, uh, well, uh, I'm hooked on Hamilton right now. <laughs> that's, so that's a different 
kind of side of it. I, I'm just always have that going in the car right now. Um, but I think I'm kind of searching for some new inspiration. Um, I, I, I have like my standard composers that I really like listening to, but I feel like with this change and diving into chamber music more, I'm kind of wanting to find something that I haven't heard yet. And, and I'll, I'll let you know what it is when I find it. Um, but I think that's my musical fear right now is this kind of like hound dog trying to hunt for um, something that, uh, that Anyway, thanks guys. This has been absolute pleasure. Um, I feel like I've gotten to know each of you a little bit better too. So um, I am, I feel so blessed to um, know each one of you. And Skagit Symphony is, is, a, um, is equally blessed uh, for receiving the, the bounty of your, your hearts and your uh, skills and your dedication. So thank you so much. So, right. long live Skagit Symphony. Yeah. Yes. May it live long and prosper, right? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Good to see, see you all. Much. Good Likewise. to see you all. Well, we're almost at the end of Skagit Symphony's Streamathon, and we're so glad you've joined us through part four. We wanted to end this last part of this event with some fireworks, and we were very fortunate that our friend King Augustine had some to share with all of you. Uh, in this case, in the form of a virtuosic showpiece, Pablo de Sarasate's Zugunerweizen, or Gypsy Airs. Pablo de Sarasate was a Spanish composer in the late 19th and early 20th century and a violin virtuoso himself. Uh, he composed this work in 1787. It can be described in four parts. There's a proud, majestic introduction, which is followed by an interlude that's seductive and improvisational. At that moment, you'll notice Kinga moves a mute over the bridge of her instrument, which gives it a less resonant uh, darker tone and at that point she plays a very nostalgic and calm melody and after that when she removes the mute again this last rapid section of virtuosic playing burst forth it's an absolute storm of violin technique and it's fascinating to watch Thank mm -hmm. you.
Jacob Scher here, assistant conductor of the Sky Symphony. I'm also the band orchestra director here at Mount Vernon High School. We're standing in the walkway that leads into one of the music rooms, and behind me is a mural that a student did a few years ago. Every time I walk by this mural, I get inspiration on what students can do 
and how their connection with art can be so powerful. I'd like to share a story with you. A few years ago, you may remember we had the Cascade Mall shooting. And this was a traumatic event for our school and our community. At that time, the Mount Rare Haskell Wind Ensemble was rehearsing a piece called An American Elegy. The day after the shooting, we had a rehearsal, and I was able to share with the students that An American Elegy was composed in memory of those who had lost their lives in a Columbine High School shooting on April 20th, 1999, and to honor the survivors. It was offered as a tribute to their great strength and courage in the face of a terrible tragedy. The composer wrote, I hope the work can also serve as one reminder of how fragile and precious life is and how connected we all are as human beings. An American elegy is, above all, an expression of hope. And we perform that piece in class, not for anyone else, not for an audience, but for ourselves. Not every note was right, not every note was in tune, but there wasn't a dry eye by the time we got through the piece. Every one of those students had created an emotional connection that crossed generations. Most of them weren't even born when that event happened. This is the power of music, the power of engaging them in a family, in the creative process. And it's organizations like the Skadden Symphony that create those opportunities and maybe ignite that flame of passion. Now that connection and that emotional event wouldn't be possible if they didn't have experiences like what the Sky Symphony would provide. Engaging high school students with performing in the orchestra, bringing in fifth graders for concerts during the school day, and family showcase events um, that get students inspired and interact with instruments up close. I hope you will consider donating to the Sky Symphony, either by the button below or visiting our website skagesymphony.com. Your donation makes a direct impact on an organization that's here in the valley that you can see and listen to. Please come to one of our family concerts next year so you can see how your donation has directly inspired the youth of Skagit Valley. Thank you. Well, friends, Parting is such sweet sorrow that I could say goodnight till it be morrow. Let's take a quick look back at all four of these events together. to him. <laughs> Can we do that a little quicker? <laughs> yeah. So as soon as I say I'll be handing the baton to him, just put your hand up and then he'll slap it in your hand. I'll have... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Brennan. All right. Handing the baton to him. Wait, where's your hand? Put your hand up. Okay. <laughs> so you're in your teaching studio. I am. <laughs> For tonight's event, I'm, uh, I forgot to announce you first. All right, let me do it again. Okay. Ready? All right, take three or four, whatever on. Uh-oh, just fell off. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. I'm loving it. Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Wheatley, music yeah. director of Skip. Oh. <laughs>
Hello everyone, I'm Michael Wheatley. <laughs> All right, you ready? All right, here we go. Take seven. Gadget Symphony. I'm here with... <laughs> Brent, you gotta, you gotta be quiet, okay? Why do you mean laugh to me? Yeah, but my, so... my collar's turned up. It's not... <laughs> All right, good enough. Handing the baton to him. What do you think? It's good. I think... <laughs> Why do you support the Skagit Symphony? The real reason I support it is a couple. One is my daughter plays in it. That's number one. And number two, they got a great percussion section. And I'm a drummer. I don't, I don't drum that kind of music, but it, it, they're fantastic musicians. And I love to see them. And then I went to see them, and I sort of like the other part of it, the orchestra. And so that's why I'm here. And I think that orchestra is fantastic. You've got to listen to it. <laughs>